there. So I got those. I can put my uh, my vertex. My vertex I know is at uh, one and a half and down at negative four, like so. And since I have all that, you have enough to give yourself a pretty good looking sketch, like so. Okay. Uh, last example for you I have is uh, kind of an easy one, not too much longer here. Uh, example three. The graph of a quadratic function passes through point C, and C is located at 6, negative 60. And they tell you the zeros of the function are at negative 4, 2. What they want you to do is write the uh, equation of the function in general form. Well, this is kind of like just going backwards, right? Rather than me trying to extract information, they're giving me that information. I want to put it back in and see what the equation is. So, the thing I'm going to key on first is that I know what those two zeros are of the function. So, if I take the regular format of a quadratic, a onto x minus x1, so that's my first coordinate, onto x minus x2. I can, of course, substitute in the x1 with, for instance, the uh, negative 4. That's going to make a negative negative 4 or a positive 4, like so. And the next one will be x minus 2. Okay. The next thing I need to determine is what is this mysterious a that's sitting in front. Well, since they tell me that it goes through this point, well, that's an ordered pair. That means that you can substitute the x information as the 6, and the negative 60 is going to go in for the y. So I have negative 60 is equal to a onto 6 plus 4, bracket 6 minus 2. I have negative 60, a, and then we can simplify here. 6 plus 4 is 10, 6 minus 2 is 4. That's going to give me negative 60 is equal to 40 a. Normally, just put the a uh, behind the coefficient. Now, to solve for this, we just have to divide both sides by 40. And we get that a is equal to, when you simplify this, it'll end up being negative 3 over 2. Or you could write that as a is equal to negative 1.5, either way. Okay. So the next thing that we have to do is, they did say that they wanted you to put it into uh, general form. So the equation that I have right now is sitting here like so. It'd be, um, maybe I'll do it in black from here on out. Y is equal to negative 1.5 bracket x minus, sorry, plus 4, x minus 2. Okay. So if you're wondering what format this is in, we would call this factored form. They, of course, want you to put it into a general form. Okay, from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distributive property to deal with my two brackets like so. Once I have that, I'm going to then multiply everything by the negative 1.5 inside. So the first thing I do is my FOIL. So FOIL this out, I have x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 4 times x is plus 4x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Okay, the next thing I'll do is I'll just gather my like terms in here quickly. This gives me a plus 2x this time, uh, minus 8. Now multiplying everything by the negative 1.5, that gives me negative 1.5x squared. Uh, negative 1.5 times 2 is the same thing as negative 3x. Uh, negative 1.5 times the 8 is the same thing as a positive 12. Right? And that would be written in general form. So to conclude this lesson, I know this one is maybe a little bit confusing because it's all over the map. What I want you to really understand is we want to try to use the factoring method if possible because you can usually extract a little bit more information than using the, um, the completing the square method. All right? And to use the factor method, all you have to do is check to see if it's factorable. How I did that was I looked at what the um, discriminant was. If I found out the discriminant was equal to a perfect square, then I knew I could use that method. If you can't, then you have to complete the square. That concludes this lesson.